So I'm a plant pathologist by training. And uh, I spend most of my career figuring out how to keep plants healthy. But then I retired and I came to work for the center um, because buffalo grass is one of those plants we have to get rid of. So now I spend my life killing plants. I'm the executive director of the Southern Arizona Buffalo Grass Coordination Center. And because it's such a long name, we usually say SAPSI. Buffalo grass is an invasive species, which means it grows very aggressively and it grows all across the landscape. At this point in time, it is invaded to the point that it is not possible to eradicate it from the landscape. It's in too many places that are inaccessible and it would be prohibitively expensive to put that kind of resources into it. What we can do is decide where our most important places are to protect. The park is threatened most by the invasive grass, buffalo grass, from, which was brought here from Africa. Buffalo grass was introduced for um, cattle forage and for erosion control. Um, a lot of the native grasses had already been um, eaten and so it was kind of like a dust bowl of this area and so they were planting it. In the region we were in there, there were really no grazing animals and so there were no good grasses for the cows that we brought over here. We essentially did it to ourselves. Yeah, that's the thing with invasive species, you don't really know they're bad until they're like everywhere. Kind of the rapid expansion of buffalo grass happened in the 1990s through the 2000s. Buffalo grass likes fire, so it can lead to increasing fire frequencies and intensity, and it burns much hotter than our native vegetation. So fire is one problem. The other problem is um, competition with native plants, just outcrowding them and um, competing for resources, water, light, nutrients. So on a small scale, I think it's definitely doable to um, get it down to a maintenance level where you're just um, annually checking on it or removing the plants, but um, er I don't think eradication is possible. One of the big concerns that we have on the Ironwood Forest National Monument is an exotic plant called buffalo grass. So we have huge efforts that we work on eradicating buffalo grass. And we have put buffalo grass on our priority list for eradication, and so what we do is we work with surrounding agencies. Well, naturally, you need funding to do that. Volunteers are crucial uh, for doing things like this. It's hard work, it's back-breaking, you're bending over, but the people that do this are part of uh, their regular volunteers. They actually do it quite a bit. Volunteers make a difference because it is manual hard labor, and so the more the better. One of the efforts with volunteers happened on September 29th, which was National Public Lands Day. It's a great effort. I, we had about 42 volunteers that day. We bagged 270 bags of buffalo grass. So it was, a, it was very successful. Hopefully, uh, it will, we will do the same again next year. It's a problem because the public doesn't really understand the threat of buffalo grass because it hasn't affected them on their property. So it could. Buffalo grass is not just a problem in our wildlands. It's growing in the city too. And it is a real health threat because of the fire. Because it's so hot and so fast, uh, we can destroy a lot of property and people. Like right now, it's, it's so much of a problem. You can't do it with your own, you know, crews. Um, you can control it, which that's what we've been doing, but we haven't been able to eradicate it. So that's, that was the big goal of this big grant, do a big push, eradicate it. There is just millions and millions and millions of dollars of investments on the airport. If you look at just the airfield, the buildings, um, everything, it's probably over a billion dollars worth of assets. We've had an incident in the past where we were mowing the infield, a rock hit the blade of the mower, caught the buffalo grass on fire, and within moments we had the size of a football field on fire. Thank goodness it was on it, you know, not close to any buildings or anything. We decided that it might be opportune to actually apply for a FEMA grant under the pre-mitigation um, disaster grant. They will reimburse you for 75% of eligible costs. The other 25% has to be um, by the sponsoring organization. Uh, there's two areas of um, being treated. 
So the grant overall was $3.4 million. Of that $3.4 million, $2.8 million is for Area 1. The remaining is for um, Area 2. We're going to aggressively treat for three years, and then we're going to reseed in the areas that need it. It would be primarily in our airfield area. Okay. After that, we do, TAA has a dedicated landscaping crew that has been treating for buffalo grass. They're going to get additional, through this effort, they're going to get additional certification. And so once they end of the three years, our landscaping group will be the ones that go throughout our properties. And when they see something, you know, start to sprout up, we will spray it right away to keep everything eradicated from our airport property. The goal is to get everybody educated on the outskirts and home. And we think we might we will be successful over a three-year period to be able to do that. So. A lot of us live in southern Arizona because we love the desert. And buffalo grass will destroy that desert. It is adapted to the drought and to the dryness and to the heat, just like our desert plants are. But it's from an area where fire is part of its ecology. It burns and it comes back. Our desert is now fire adapted. And if a fire comes in, it kills the plants because they can't withstand the heat back. And so this will turn into a grassland, a fire adapted grassland, and that's, you know, we would have no more saguaros, we'd have no more palo verde, and all of the wonderful plants and animals that, that uh, are part of our desert.